Humanity is on a perpetual cycle of reinvention and regeneration to adapt to continuous changes in economic landscapes, to react to our competitors and evolving market conditions, and to overcome the challenges which limit our growth. But what if we flipped the narrative? What if we placed humanity above it all? What if our time is spent on new thinking to envision innovative solutions and pioneering ideas? Imagine a world that adapts to us and is built for us to engage seamlessly across global borders and the borders of the physical, virtual, Imagine a world where we will have unrestrained creativity and which, powered by technology, will enable us to create unlimited solutions. We are at the cusp of a new age where humanity is at the center and technology an enabler to empower our imagination, ideas, and dreams into a reality. Avasant is at the forefront of this innovation, empowering organizations to exceed their greatest potential. Our management consulting solutions, transformation advisories, research and data enables our clients to hyper-accelerate their sourcing, digital, IT and business transformation and growth priorities to realize unprecedented value. Now is the time to unleash your imagination. Embrace the opportunities of this new age. Unlock the possibilities to create disruptive solutions for a smarter and brighter future. Empower your limitless potential. Avasant. Empowering beyond. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, welcome to our event this morning. My name is Marcy Booth, the events director here at Avasant. And I am excited uh, to welcome you to our fourth installment of the Distinguished Fellows Leadership Series. Today's conversation will focus on transformational leadership and innovation and will give you a number of takeaways. Before I introduce today's moderator, I, uh, please feel free to ask any questions throughout the, the conversation. Um, to our speakers by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. With that, I would love to welcome our moderator today, Fred Pond, who is an Avasan Fellow. Fred, welcome. Thank you so much, Marcy, um, and thank you. Um, and uh, welcome to everybody that's on the call today. Can we have the slide deck um, up, please? to slide three and make it in mode. Okay, thank you. So I'm Fred Pond and I am an Avisant fellow and I have been a fellow for about four years and a fellow within Avisant is a retired CIO CTO um, that now works part-time uh, helping Avisant with strategic uh, guidance around their research uh, because there's a large research angle to Avisant. I also help with uh, proposals and client solutions and can actually work on engagements for clients uh, in, in that role. I, all, I retired from my CIO CTO role, which was the global head of technology for Columbia Sportswear about six years ago. And I now uh, sit on a couple of boards of directors of companies in the Pacific Northwest, uh, along with my Avisant role. And I also uh, am the lead uh, facilitator for the Pacific Northwest Regional Leadership Forum, which is a nine month uh, leadership development program sponsored by the Society for Information Management. And with that, we can go to the next slide. So I first wanna to touch on that we came up, four or five of uh, Avisant fellows got together about a year and a half ago and brainstormed something we could bring that would be different than just the technology focused events that Avisant's famous for. 
um, around sourcing and uh, digital transformation and things like that. And we decided we wanted to do something around leadership. So we started uh, about a year ago in January of 2022 with our first event, which was called Defining Leadership uh, in today's business world. And it was a very fundamental foundational event with a few panelists talking about, you know, what business is like today uh, during the pandemic uh, time and how leadership um, was different and what people were doing to be successful. We followed that up with a second session in April of 2022 called Leadership in the Age of the Great Resignation. And as all of us know, the Great Resignation was brutal at that time and continues to, to go on with people changing jobs, having a different focus on what they want to do with their lives and those things. And we had a great panelist um, on uh, talking about tricks and tools to help retain people, to challenge them and to keep people and not have as big an impact from this resignation. Our third session in July of last year um, was continuous learning for lifetime uh, leading. And again, we had a panel there that talked a lot about how they had reinvented themselves multiple times during their careers and continued to do that. And some of the tips and techniques around that reinvention and bringing energy, not only to your own career, but people on your team and other leaders around you. Next slide. So now we're to the fourth session and I wanna do some ground setting um, around innovation and call out a couple of uh, things that uh, I pulled out uh, from the web uh, about innovation. And one of them is from PricewaterhouseCooper. And they have this cool little dynamic uh, three circle paradigm uh, where they believe that if people are addressing le um, leadership and innovation with these three paradigms, they become a game changer in their lingo. So with that, they believe you have to be solving exponential crises. You aren't a game changer if you're just doing regular run of the mill technology or innovation things. You have to really be going for the big crises in, you know, out in the marketplace or in your industry and attacking them head on uh, to be a game changer. The second key element of this is harnessing exponential technologies. And again, Pricewaterhouse believes you have to be going at these transformations with all kinds of technology, not one technology, but every kind of technology you can. And I'll talk a little bit more about it on the next slide. And then the last thing they say is, you only bring this all together if you not only are taking on a crisis using multiple technologies, but you're willing to make a paradigm shift in the business model of your company. And that can be creating an entirely new model that is hybrid with the old one, or it could be an entirely new business model that replaces the old business model. Next slide. Okay, just a little bit more about PwC's paradigms. Again, on these ex exponential crises, they, they call out things like dealing with income inequity, climate change, lack of um, adequate health care, dwindling natural resources, pandemics, supply chains, those really big things that are in the news every day right now. But there's always more of those within your industry and your company. And you don't need to take on one of these, you can create your own. So, but Pricewaterhouse believes you have to find something that will galvanize the entire company around that transformational uh, crisis that you want to innovate around. On harnessing technologies, as I said, Pricewaterhouse calls out artificial intelligence, big data and data analytics, um, internet of things, virtual reality, but there's a lot more technologies, but the theme they have is you have to be looking at how you're gonna utilize in a holistic way, all these technologies to take on this crisis that you're gonna focus your company on. And then of course, the third one we touched on is creating that exponentially new business model. And again, they stress that you can't just keep the same old business model and put technology or automation and things around it and really be a game changer. If you want to be a game changer, you have to deal with 
core direct parts of that business model and what comes in and out of the business, how you interact with the customer and how you just do business in every way. Next slide. So I wanna to pivot to one other perspective on innovation and that's from the Harvard Business Review. And you can see this article, Innovation in Business. What is it and why is it important from 2002? And if you want the details, you can obviously Google that and, and find all this, but I pulled out a few key things from that that I wanna share as a lead into today's panel. So today's competitive landscape relies heavily on innovation. And if you're not innovating, you're gonna be falling behind. And innovation is key no matter what your industry, whether it's an old school industry, whether it's a services industry, whether it's got a uh, product in it or not, you have to be looking at embedding um, innovative leadership in what you're doing across the board. Harvard calls out two kinds of innovation. One is sustaining innovation. And that's really the kind of innovation that you should be embedding in day-to-day -day, uh, things, uh, continuous improvement, uh, lean, uh, automation, all those kind of things are that sustainable kind of innovation that should be going on within a company all the time. And then disruptive innovation. And that's really what the game changers from Price Waterhouse talk about. That's disruptive innovation where you're picking that crisis, you're picking those technologies, and you're picking a new business model, and that is going to disrupt not only your company, but your industry. The last item that they called out um, around this is that successful companies must incorporate both kinds of these uh, innovations to be truly successful and be sustainable in the long run. Next slide. Okay. So why is innovation important? Harvard called out three fairly simple uh, elements to this. One is it allows for adaptability. Companies need to be adaptable. The example that they call out was COVID, obviously. That impacted every company three years ago. Um, I know companies that were off and running within two weeks and had solved most of their remote work and had adjusted their business models and were flying along. I know other companies that a year later were still struggling and some companies didn't even quite make it through that because they weren't adaptable. So that adaptability is a key thing. And if you're always innovating and you're always bringing out new things, it leads to that adaptability uh, mindset. It fosters growth. No question, as you innovate and bring in new things, uh, the article drives in deeply that the companies won't stagnate. They will be bringing out new products, new solutions, new customer models, new engagements, and that stuff. And that's critical to how businesses thrive. And then the last one, it separates you from your competition. Every company has, and every industry has multiple competitors all fighting for space. And the ones that are the most innovative and are trying new things and are leading forward are going to be the long-term successes. Last slide on the Harvard stuff. They call out in this article and have a discussion around design thinking and how that can help with the innovation model. And they use this very simple model uh, of clarify, ideate, develop, and then implement. And the key to doing this thing is to be very agile, break it into small chunks, and be able to make a difference, especially on sustaining innovation, um, that it's going on all the time. The disruptives, you still wanna do this. It may not be quite as agile, but you want to be able to continue to push this model. And with that, um, let's go to the next slide. And I wanna bring on our the great new two panelists I have today. And we're gonna let them um, join the call and uh, introduce themselves. So let's drop the slides and bring on the cameras and the video for Lutz and Bapesh. Okay, why don't we start Lutz? Um, why don't you introduce yourself, a little bit about your background and a little bit about your company? All right, um, yeah, thanks Fred. Um, good morning from my side or yeah, almost good afternoon from my side. So uh, Lutz Beck, I'm the uh, CIO of uh, Daimler Trucks North America, I think. Uh, Daimler Trucks, also known a Freightliner, Western Star are the brands which we're having, right? Um, 
working for the company since quite uh, some time. Uh, uh, was uh, stationed basically in Germany, uh, started my career there with the company in Germany, was moving for six years to Japan, heading uh, Daimler Trucks Asia as a CIO, and now I'm since almost five years here in uh, the US, uh, heading the uh, <clears throat> biggest uh, uh, biggest entity in a certain sense of Daimler Trucks here, uh, which is Daimler Trucks North America. Thank you. You bet. Thanks lots. And good to hear about your organization. And you're here in Portland, Oregon, same city I'm in. Now yeah. let's switch to Bupesh. And why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about your company? Fred and Avasan, thank you, firstly, for inviting me to the panel. Um, pretty excited to be on the panel and, and have the exciting topic of innovation. It's one of my favorite topics to discuss. Uh, so um, a little bit about myself. Abu Presh Arora, I'm the Vice President and CIO at Magellan Midstream Partners. We are based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we are a oil and gas company, midstream company, which means we're right in the middle. We don't dig up the oil from the ground, which is upstream. We're right in the middle where we distribute or store the oil, which is both refined petroleum as well as crude. And we have marine terminals too. So we pretty much uh, have um, the entire, almost in a decent chunk of Midwest, so 10,000 miles of pipeline for refined fuels and 2,000 plus for crude and uh, around 37 million barrels of storage as well. And we have two marine terminals uh, where we uh, sh ship to the, you know, and we load up the oil in the tanker truck for exports or whatever the reason may be. Uh, so the company has been around for uh, 20 years as a spin-off from Williams Company. Uh, so it's been in existence more than that. But as Magellan, we've been in existence for 20 years. Uh, we are a public company, Master Limited Partnership, uh, 3.2 billion. That's the revenue or the uh, revenue um, performance results as 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 uh, recent as two days back as we announced our annual uh, results. And um, yeah, I've been with the company to and a half years, um, close to three years. May I'll complete three years. Uh, prior to that, I'm, oil and gas, by the way, is very new to me. But prior to that, I've been in uh, automotive. So that's I've uh, been in automotive for uh, wow, nine years at um, Hyundai as well as uh, Nissan, mm -hmm. and then uh, spent a decade at B two B manufacturing company, Avid Edison. So, on twenty years of experience in diverse companies, including management consulting. And innovation definitely has been um, pretty strong and common thread across those. Uh, but today we'll talk more about Magellan. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Now, I, I think it's interesting that we have two companies that you could say are long, long time companies. I mean, semis have been being built for, I don't know, 75 years, something like that. You know, obviously oil and gas has been around for, you know, more than 100 years and its pipelines have advanced and everything. So we have old school companies from what they're really doing. But I think you're going to find some really cool innovation that's going on in these uh, mature companies. And so with that, I want to throw out my first question. And that is to you, back to you, Bapesh, please discuss the innovations that you're driving in your company today and how they are really impacting the organization. Yeah. Um... A lot is happening here. So if you look at the energy industry, especially oil and gas, it, it's going through a major transition. And maybe let's may have some of the transition going on where we companies are moving from oil and gas to electric, for example, right? That, what, what that means is the industry slows down. That doesn't mean it goes away. We probably got 30 to 40 years still in this industry, uh, at least. You know, it, it changes every year as we say there's energy crisis and we say, oh, maybe it's 35 years. Who knows? You know, but it's a long time still that we need um, oil and gas. And, uh, but it's slowing down, right? It's slowing down. And when that happens, um, companies do look at how can we transition, right, uh, in terms of energy. And also we look at um, how technology can enable us to be more efficient or even drive new revenue models, for example. And we looked at all of those. Obviously, I'm not going to speak more to the business context, such as, oh, are we investing in carbon storage, for example, right? And those those kind of um, 
business opportunities. We are always looking at that, uh, but I'm not going to go into that. But we do, by the way, do do ship renewable fuels in some areas. So we we are, you know, um, shipping different kind of fuels just on the business context, and then shipping to and, and then shifting to technology. Really, the opportunity for me that's what really made me uh, join Magellan is how can we use technology to create new new opportunities for Magellan and and we did a, uh, the, the, I would say the management was hungry for that and it's the best time to come in. And what, uh, two, two, when I joined two years, uh, I would say two years back, we did a digital strategy, right? And we got all on 60 people across the company together and really looked at what, we, what is possible. What is possible with technology in Magellan? And it was really the starting point. It was all about, digital fluency. So we spend like four weeks training them on what's digital firstly. And then we spend around eight weeks exploring ideas and we came up with 130 ideas. So I can keep on talking about all those ideas, uh, but we did prioritize around 30 ideas. And that's what we're working on as a three-year roadmap. And um, it's exciting because you got millions of dollars back to that. And we measure that and we report to the, and I reported to the board too, all these major initiatives. Um, but they all, in, they all, they are in multiple areas, right? So when we look at a digital strategy, we got people from all the functions, not all the functions, but where we thought was the, had the most opportunity, for example, commercial uh, operations, um, looking at uh, employee uh, engagement experiences that can drive that. So we, we got um, folks from most of the functions and that's where our efforts are. You look at customer experience, which typically has the, biggest innovation opportunity if we have not invested much, right? How do we get closer to the customers? How do we create stickiness? How do we get them better at customer experience? So we got a slew of initiatives and we're already driving obviously revenues of those in terms of subscriptions uh, from, the, from the customers because we're able to connect and service them better with technology. So that's one good example of that. The, um, the others are in, uh, for example, in the uh, operations. Yeah, in operations, we got uh, multiple, um, I will say, proof of concepts as well as um, initiatives going on, which is looking at how we can get more efficient in operations with AI, right? So there's multiple AI components. Predictive maintenance is a great one. We got 10,000 I mentioned. It's a great way to look at, um, uh, you know, AI, where you utilize AI and see how we can do more predictive maintenance. So we have a lot of geospatial type of technologies, a lot of data, we got a lot of data. So, so utilizing AI on the data is, um, is another example. And the third one I would say is, uh, since we talked about data, if typically when you go in a company that's been around for a while, you get a lot of islands of data and the power <laughs> is really figuring out if you can't do it overnight, but you have to do it in phases, right? So. Uh, we have a lot of focus on data and making decision making faster or even finding opportunities when you connect islands of data together. So those are uh, some examples. But, you know, what we also did with the change is we embedded innovation in our vision statement. And it's on our website. You can go in, innovative and engage workforce. So that's how focused we are on innovation as a company. And uh, you can see the um, with the number of initiatives we come up, uh, we come up is is uh, the journey is not going to end in three years because we've, what we've done is shifted mindsets. So now it's more of not the push, it's more of the pull that's that's happening right now. So I'm just going to pause here, but I hope that it explains the, the digital transformation, the journey, and some opportunity areas we're pursuing as examples. Thank you so much. Good stuff. And it sounds like you're going to be very busy for the next three to 10 years. <laughs> and and I, I got to think that you probably, your jaw dropped last night when the president said we were going to have oil and gas around for only 10 years. <laughs> I read press releases every day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 50 to 100, but that's me. Let's now, how about you? Same question. What's going on with innovation? What's driving it in your company? You know, how is it impacting trucks? Well, I think, um, and Bupesh was uh, going in certain areas already, right? I mean, because it's highly connected, of course. 
I mean, if you look at the automotive industry in, in general, right, there is a, a huge disruption, which is not just started now, it's since years is going on, right, where, where, you, where you work on better experience for the customers and where you work with the data, where you look at connected uh, trucks, connected uh, passenger cars, all that kind of topics are in the, in the market since quite some time. But uh, still, I think uh, you have, of course, uh, uh, initiatives like e-mobility, right, which is coming back to the oil and gas. And I need to I need to say uh, 50 to 100 years is a bit too long, at least for the automotive industry. You will probably see 20 years, but then you might you might have really a small portion on it. Right, because um, there is one topic which we should not forget. Right, I mean, and we have that as a company just defined. We want to lead the sustainable transportation, and sustainability is a, is a key element of everything what we're doing now. So um, <clears throat> I think this is important, and this is basically disrupting the whole industry because you will you will need to change significantly what you do today when you are thinking about e-mobility, when you're thinking about automated trucks or autonomous. <clears throat> thriving, which is uh, actually funny but enough. Uh, you know, everybody looks at passenger cars and is very happy when he's having a level three or a level four autonomous. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, the real business case is for the trucking uh, because uh, that's exactly what is what is going on. But you will see still, of course, oil and gas because we know out of the data and <clears throat> Bubish was referring to data that there is routes within the basically if you look at usa you see where it makes sense with e-mobility and where it does not make sense with e-mobility but with all these topics of course is coming new business models is coming a new service model and is coming new business processes and all these kind of topics now uh, we call that digital activation so what we are doing is basically and this is the centerpiece of everything what we're doing in digital activation is reimagining re-engineering our processes because technology is today no more limiting factors, right? If you look back, maybe 30 years back, 20 years back, technology was some kind of limiting factor. But nowadays you have everything, right? <clears throat> you have more innovations on the technology side than in everywhere else. So I think um, it's about more how we how we change our business model, how we how we create the experience for the customer, how we create the stickiness for the customer. And how we how we make that, and then you have of course a big shift because you have these established models, right? Where you have the truck manufacturer, you have the dealer network, you have the fleets and and the customers behind, right? And this is a big movement in this area as well. So I mean, we all know that without trucks we cannot survive, right? There is uh, enough statistics out in the in the in the pandemic. There was enough statistics. So if we would have stopped driving or transporting goods with the trucks, we would have run out of food within two days. We would have run out of uh, medical supply within three days and all that kind of stuff. So it's an essential industry for, for here. And uh, we need to look at how we can make it more sustainable, how we can move it in a different way. And the thing is all to create this experience now to look into how can we start creating a better experience for our dealers, for our customers, with our dealers, with our supply chain, right? Looking into everything what you have, because <clears throat> at the end, the demand is not stopping. Electrification will come. It's a big topic, right? There is more and more coming. And of course, this is a big topic in terms of infrastructure as well and a big change. But it's creating an enormous amount of opportunities for new services. And there you see a lot of companies, of course, trying to join the big market, right? Um, and I'm, I'm still, I'm still always saying we are, we are the, yeah, we invented the automobile in a certain sense when you look at Daimler, right, as a, as a company, and uh, <clears throat> we need to invent also the future of sustainable transportation, and we need to be in the forefront of doing everything on that one. And this is, this is what is driving us uh, in the company. And what is pushing us forward uh, technology gives me a lot of opportunities to do so but what is the key element is basically that with all the innovations which we're having with everything what we're doing we basically need to change the base we are operating on so all the processes which we have and they are good don't get me wrong we're they're good we are market leader right we have a 
Uh, <clears throat> we are the biggest uh, truck manufacturer in the world with over 500,000 units a year. But on the other side, we also know that our business model will not work anymore in five years or 10 years, right? So we need to change that substantially to not be, and, and we have this discussion, a hardware provider, because we all know what is happening with hardware provider, right? This is a cost game. This is not something else. So we are, we're working uh, heavily towards services, to create services, to create uh, platforms and ecosystems where we basically offering an experience for our customers, for our dealers, for our suppliers, uh, which is completely different, but which is giving us a, a huge opportunity basically to do things in a different way. So um, <clears throat> that's a key driver for us. Data certainly, uh, data is in the in the in the middle of everything, right? Um, we started uh, we started the digital transformation journey actually, uh, yeah, I would say four, five, six years back. And uh, we added a strategy which is called building the intelligent company. The target is here clearly to use data to create services, to take decisions based on data. And of course, with everything what is coming on the technology side now, AI topics, whatever, we want to incorporate that everything because at the end of the day, what is the most important for us, create a superior experience for our customer where they which is creating then a stickiness where they say, hey, this is cool. Uh, this is what we what we want, because when we are going in this ecosystem, we can have everything what, what is around. So that means there is a lot of services. It's not just the product, which is the truck. There is a lot of services around the truck, which is belonging to everything what we are doing. And, and this is what we want to offer. Uh, there could be insurance. There could be other topics, right? We are working, of course, with the with the cities, with the authorities here as well, because when you look at smart city concepts and steering the traffic, that's something where we have data, yeah, because we are collecting data. We have 500,000 trucks connected. So we know exactly what's going on on each of the uh, <clears throat> highways and whatever. So we can, we can deliver data as well. Data as a service is of course, something which is also in, in play, but um, I mean, it's significantly changing everything what we're doing. And uh, beside the fact that we have all these changes and we know that we change, need to change the operating model in a certain sense, we're heavily working on leadership skills because everything what we did in the past is good. <clears throat> but when you look at what, what is required from a leadership point of view uh, in order to manage all that, uh, we do know that we have to significantly change on the leadership, leadership skills yeah. as well. And this is something where the company is working towards now as well, that we get create some kind of a different leadership skill, uh, which is helping us uh, to really drive this momentum, which we have in the, in, in the disruption, which we have in the industry at the moment. Okay, very good. And I think both show very much that you're driving toward being a PwC game changer. You're hitting on all the aspects of what that model was about. Um, I want to come back to you, Bapesh, and I've got a kind of a combination question of what are your biggest challenges in leading this transformation and what skills and tools are you using that you probably weren't using in past work? I think you go to any company where innovation was not a word, but it's a word now. That's a big culture shift. Because <laughs> um, if you look at Magella and we were we've always been doing great as a company. We were investing 500 million to a billion every year to build those pipelines and then suddenly stalled, right? And um, there's a lot of, you know, customer driven type of initiatives. Now, innovation is a word that, um, that people have to learn firstly. What does that mean? And that itself me is a, is a whole different paradigm shift in terms of do we have the culture to innovate and present ideas and take them from one step to the next, you know, one uh, submission to actually doing something about the idea? So this is a whole new process. It's a whole new concept for the company to understand. And that's why doing that strategy in the beginning was a lot of that training. What does that mean? What is, you know, how do we really handle innovation? What is the process for it? And we created an, created an innovation office with an IT. Uh, coming out of that. And, and really the culture change or the shift 
started happening at that time itself because you want to shift mindsets that it's not about building a pipeline where you build a 500 mile pipeline and there's you know revenue that you know contract that you have you may not know whether there's value or not right and we you need to be willing to invest in the value but we need to do it fast so all this concept of agility um a bit you know it's okay to have not every idea it's pan out as a successful idea but but do it you know do it in a manner that we know what we learn from that and that's what builds on it right all those are culture shifts that we focused on and that's that's really i would say it's still happening right it's still happening i think we move from a push to a pull we're getting more and more departments submitting ideas versus going in and asking you know let's participate in a workshop let's do certain you know let's look at this problem and how we can innovate it's more becoming a pull where they're calling us that itself means it's become more grassroots right so initially it was top down and there were some there was a leadership push now it's becoming more grassroots and that's that's huge that's positive for the company uh and the the second aspect is um when i talked about not every idea pans out it's we do talk about that right we talk about it in in terms of we learned what we learned versus a failure. So we don't use the word failure for an idea. And that's a shift too, because the most companies go in and no different, um, the majority of any um, company that's been around, it may seen as a failure, but we don't really use that word. We say, what did we learn from, you know, doing five of these? Was our, you know, was our investment worth it? And did we come out with five more ideas of that, which we didn't think about like a startup thinking. So that's the other, um, I would say communicating what we're doing and really acknowledging what we have learned and 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 appreciating everybody's effort um, is is extremely important uh, as a culture shift. And thirdly, it's about the velocity, right? So the culture shift. If you want to do innovation, you want to be able to do your ideas faster. So one, you you start with an idea, maybe it takes six months because you never really did innovation. Next time you do it, it probably needs to be five months. So the velocity needs to increase. And so we use a lot of um, agile concepts, obviously, you know, MVP, you talked about design thinking, all these concepts, but just not in IT, right? So innovation doesn't just happen within IT. We train agile to functions as well. When we come together, they, are, they know the concepts of rapid prototyping and scaling already learned or they learn through the project. Uh, and that's, together is an important component of innovation because we just think IT is doing it, then it's only probably 50% of the answer and probably will fail. So bringing the, whole, bringing the company together is extremely important from a culture shift and the leadership. And so those leadership skills that are already pertinent to innovation and applying that, getting, getting top-down momentum or the buy-in, as well as creating a, enough freedom Right, creating the freedom to innovate and acknowledging what's being learned, showing the progress is is the key to success. Um, so that's about the leadership skills. I would say even the people you hire, you it's not like you want ten innovators running around, but you want leaders that support the innovation that right. really that really rotate people because if if you look at IT shop, they all want to do the coolest thing. So you also have to. Think about when you hire leaders or you build your team, how do you give opportunities to innovate and rotate people in and out of that innovation team per se? And now, and that was the initial part, but now it's putting innovation in multiple areas. It's just not in one team. It's kind of more pervasive, right? So that's really the journey concept that I was talking about. Uh, so that's, to me, you know, that's really been the experience and that's why we are progressing that well. In terms of tools, um, I think we talked about the tools, you know, yeah. which is the agile and you know design thinking, MVP, um, seed funding, you know, do it fast, don't waste, don't waste too much money, um, go in incremental phases, and we actually have a governance committee that we um, at the CEO level that we showcase the innovations. Right. Here are the ten innovations we're working on. Here's what the outcome is, um, and can we get the next round of funding, so to speak, right. to go to the next level? Maybe, and maybe five of this, five of them still we need to put in money to explore the idea, and that's okay, right? Yeah. 
but it's supported at the level. And that's why um, I think those the tools is also about the governance and the uh, communication that comes into play. So okay. I hope that. Yeah, no, ton of great information. I think <laughs> makes a lot of sense. The agile, the scrum, bringing the business and the IT people together in scrum meetings and things so that there's that clear communication. They're all on the same boat. It, it is a, a key thing. Let's, um, he, he covered a lot of things. If you got some other things to add to this um, around? I mean, look, uh, from, from, from my point of view, of course, uh, you know, when you look at the leadership skills, right? I mean, we all, we all know, right? The, the topics like be authentic or, or uh, reflect and listen and all that kind of things. But uh, what, we, what, we, what we are looking for, what we are adding now is basically envision the future. Yeah, having having people really uh, developing a compelling vision and a, a strategy for the future, looking into what could be right, and taking also assumption, taking risks. Right, uh, this is a key element as well. I mean, if you if you change something, you don't know exactly how it will work out. E-mobility is a very nice example. If you go into the charging market, you don't know how it plays out. But at the end of the day, if you don't take the risk, nobody is doing it, and no, nothing will happen. Right, so. That's something which you need to do. And this is, of course, in a corporate environment, much more difficult than if you have it in a, in a, some kind of a startup or whatever uh, topic. But we need to apply that thinking as well. We need, to, we need to inspire the people much more than we did in the past, right? There was also an element, but now you inspire in a completely different level because at the end of the day, there was a certainty. There were certain elements that were just the same, right? Now it's a it's a different thinking and and also multi perspective right in 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 the past of course you were looking a bit more on your siloed view in a certain sense right now you create holistic business models right everything what is holistic you you're not looking into the smaller things you need to look more into having a holistic uh, holistic picture and this is something we are we are now embracing and we are working towards in our leadership um, to really work on that one. Make sure that we have this kind of skill set, and and as Booker said as well, you don't have everybody the same, right? We don't want to have that, but you need to have these different characters within the team in order to manage. So you need to have these challengers in a certain sense, which are which are challenging the existing, which are saying, hey, this is not good enough, right? You need to you need to get ideas out, right? And of course, agile is whatever agile, but you know what? I mean, if, yeah, everybody is doing HL now, right? Because it's a it's a it's a term of definition how you define HL, right? Uh, most of the companies do not really understand what is HL because some of the some of the companies do not have the skills anymore, do also not have the content skills anymore to work really HL because HL is requiring actually that you know what you want and that you are able to define what you want. Right. But the waterfall was teaching us we do a lot of workshops, we do a lot of stuff in order to do that. But HR is taking a certain risk in because it could be that you are wrong, that you're reacting in a different way. And this is this is the funny part of it. So you need to have leaders which are going into this element as well and, and, and driving this innovation, trying something out, taking the risk and, and saying, OK, maybe it's not the 100 percent solution which we are having, but it's maybe the 80 percent solution. And what we are doing uh, specifically, of course, on, on the IT side, I'll take my people to startups. I let them learn from startups. I let them learn. I say, look at, look at the startup community here or look at the startup community here. Look how they're doing things. And this is what, you, what I want them, at least from a, from a methodology in a certain sense, that they are applying certain elements in their work as well. Uh, they know they have my backing. If, if something is going wrong, yes, of course it's going wrong. If nothing, nothing was working in the past, always 100%. So, but they need to have the backing that they can do it and, and to, to basically bloom this, hey, uh, innovative uh, or innovation topic that you say, okay, I'll try something different. Um, that's something where, where we actively steering towards that we, that we have that and that we also encourage the people in a different way than we did in the past. Okay. Great stuff again. So I'm going to throw out one last question to each of you before we then move to the Q and a session uh, after this. So my, my last question is going to be, what's the biggest challenge you've seen in your efforts and what have you done to try to overcome it? And I'll throw that out to back to you, Bapesh. 
I think it's, I think we did talk about it. Um, we talk about the, the company culture. You know, if, if yeah. the culture is not open, then innovation stops pretty fast. The, so the leadership has to be open to investments, be open to experimentation, be open to going into the world of unknown, investing some money into it, and then seeing what the results are. So ability to take those risks and believe in the power of technology, right? Because we are we are a technology forum here. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, I think culture is super important. The other part is, um, and it's a, it it was it's a it's a journey. I wouldn't say it's a challenge, it's a journey to get them to that path, right? But if it's not, um, if if they're not open, nothing is going to happen. The other one is um, where companies such as ours, the the fluency, right? So people like let, let's talk about uh, agile. Do really people understand agile? So just that learning to get people to that point takes a while. And you got yes. to invest in the learning. So you may think you have all these wonderful ideas I talked about, and you can go fast, but really you cannot go that fast because you got to get them to the page where they can work in, with your pace versus their pace. And their pace needs some education, needs some right. literacy, and you got to bring them along. And that's mm -hmm. a challenge in any mm -hmm. traditional companies that are trying to innovate. And you got to factor that in. So don't be going and say, I'm going to solve world's hunger in like two years. That's right. probably not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Take that yeah. pace of change and the literacy into account. Mm -hmm. And that's always, that's that's an ongoing uh, effort on, on within Magellan, for example. Yeah. Yeah. But that is, let's not forget the skill sets <clears throat> because, you know, it's not about ERP. It's not about uh, putting in supply chain systems or custom development. It's not about that. Uh, when you look at, with our company, it's the 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 value really comes from knowing your business well, and then going deep into applying what kind of technology that may be of value. And that takes people who know data science, who can really know the value of data, getting people together. It's not overnight, you know. You got to really uh, work through those, grind through those, because um, you may not you may not firstly um, have the knowledge to even execute those ideas. So there's a what I what I I guess what I'm trying to get to. Make sure you think about the skill sets you need in the organization. You may have all these ideas. If you need data skill sets, whether it's in the functions, whether it's in IT, and you need it in both, <laughs> you frankly need it in both. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to go and hire those and yeah. build a plan. Uh, you can bring in consultants. They can give you a path for sure, like Amazon, you know, and can give you a path to a ramp up path. But in the end. You got to build that in-house capability because that's how innovation is going to sustain. It right. may take a while to build that. And then once you get to the point, and that's where I think we are, we have invested two years in hiring a lot of people, whether it's in data, whether it's in AI type of capabilities, whether it's even understanding agile. So the whole, and we're still going through it. We have, I, I think we got one more year of hiring or two more years of hiring to keep on bringing these modern skill sets because it's about and and smart people because you you know it's not about getting the volume but people who can really connect know yeah. the how do you connect between data and AI uh, analytics for example or or and data how do you connect between you know um, you know between systems can you go in deep and look into that where if you if you bring in if you kind if you integrate these two systems do you get some different answers for example. And the cloud, for example, has a lot of capabilities, right? So somebody that can really see how we can, if we put one plus one, is the answer going to be four? If we get these technologies together, that's a hard one. And it, yeah. it, it's hard to find. And many times you don't find them. So you've got to invest in them, right? You're going to invest in them and get to the point where you can sus start sustaining the innovation. So it's, right. I wouldn't say, oh, you know, innovation is you come with ideas and tomorrow we're going to execute on 30. It takes a while, especially when the company is complex and you are ramping up your culture, you're ramping up your flow, your literacy in digital and you're ramping up your skill sets. Right. So that is the biggest challenge in innovation. And once you get to the point, then it's gonna be a smoother path, but do think about the ramp up aspect. And that is the, I would say the biggest challenge. Once you get past that, it's smooth sailing. Um, yeah. In terms of getting the Clear. organization. 
clearly what I'm hearing is it's a journey. It is not a sprint. It is a marathon and you are in that marathon and you've invested heavily. You're getting people on board. You've added a ton of resources to help you with that journey. Um, and, and, you know, it will never end. Mm -hmm. Let's want to add anything more to that. Um, biggest challenge, how you've overcome it. I mean, culture is, as uh, Booker said, but culture is one thing. The what I what I'm always calling digital mindset is that if, is the this the next one right now, and and we we see that right when you hire uh, college grads or whatever, right? They are going with a complete different mindset and in, in topics, right? As as we do it, right? And and this is something which is which is for me a bit the limiting factor at the moment, right? Because you are changing the culture, so and and. The question is, you know, how successful you will be in, in doing that, because culture is, of course, not so easy, right? When you look at the old organizational models, there is unfreeze, there is change, and there is freeze, right? This is, but I think this doesn't work anymore because the technological innovations will basically be so much that we cannot cope with it anymore. So at the end of the day, you you have a journey, but you, this journey is never stopping. It's just continuing, right? It's just continuing. And the key will be how you how you basically out of IT, and this is also a thing for, for IT, basically telling and teaching or making my, my team understanding, IT is not just done in IT in the future. It's about the citizen technologies. There is a lot of people who do have a knowledge. There is a lot of no code, low code stuff. So we can give that out, but we can leverage much more and we can be uh, uh, bringing much more services out there. And this is a this is a cultural element. And this is uh, the key topic for me, how we how we will be successful in, in doing that. And and there is, of course, a lot of resistance, right? There is a lot of resistance because everybody says, hey, we have a very successful model. Why we should change that? Right. In, and in the past, you always learned, hey, you change when you are having a, you know, when, when something is not working, then, of course, you change. But now you change because there is just a constant need of changing to adapt to what is what is coming. And um, I think uh, that's the key element for us where we're working on, and we call it digital mindset. So we, we did start a program on IT side two years back on digital mindset, and now we're starting it for the whole company to get it done. And I'll give you a nice example. I talked with the colleagues here two and a half years back about an ecosystem, building an ecosystem. It was not the time. They didn't understand what I wanted. They were not <laughs> ready for it, right? Now they're ready and now we can do it. It's it's unfortunate because you're losing time. So you need to find different ways to push things. But at the end of the day, that's that's what it's all about. It's all about the culture and the mindset. Okay. Yeah, What clearly what I'm hearing is the challenges around people and culture and those things. It's not about the technology. You can solve those things much easier than you can the, the other aspects of, of it with the organization, the people, and mm -hmm. the culture of it. And once you get that solved, you start to get real momentum. And you're both at that pivot point now, but you've both invested significant efforts for a long period of time. And you've made good progress, I'm sure, but you haven't you know, solved everything yet. And, and you never may never uh, in that journey and that stuff. So we've got I, one- uh, I, If I can add one more thing. Sure. I, think, I, I think just generally where IT department was, <clears throat> To where we're being challenged is a is a big leap. So here for leadership, I think we just need to acknowledge that we being challenged to innovate. That we have to step up, and that's a big step up, right? Yeah. And just when you say we, it's just not the leaders, but the, the a team below us too, right? You know, and I think that is a big. You know, I don't know whether I elaborated on that well enough. That is a as the organization is learning, we also need to learn new ways of innovation to, to be faster to innovate faster to innovate to have a digital mindset that you mm -hmm. talked about we i use digital fluency but we got to change your it's about you know the 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 company is asking us to change the game and frankly we haven't got a degree in that right most people <laughs> so so it is it is a huge challenge and we are frankly many of us are learning as we go mm -hmm. but we build, we're bringing our experiences, right, in terms of the, um, the the backgrounds we have, 
but we are learning and adjusting as we go. And that's it's huge for the leaders, right? right? And I just want to, I, I don't want to undermine that that fact. It is um, it is a challenge for the technology leaders as well. Yeah. And a lot of training, like you talked about, Lutz, I totally agree. And there's a lot of training within our company. So just want to add that. Yeah. Note. No, I think clearly change is never easy in any part of an organization. This one really does push on every aspect of what change means to every person in an organization, because everybody's roles and jobs and things are changing as you innovate. Mm -hmm. We've got a question from the audience that I want to throw out quickly and get each of your take on it. So the question comes in, how are you as leaders helping your organization appreciate test and learn mindsets, mm -hmm. taking into consideration the risks associated, financial or otherwise, how do you help manage that whole test and learn mindset so that you try things and you're okay to not have them be as successful as you want? <laughs> I'll let Lutz go first this time. <laughs> no, good. I can, I can take that, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I'll do that every day, right? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm living that. I'm living that test and learn on a daily basis, right? So I'm I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the example for my team. I'm example for the whole company, and I'm challenging it. Um, I have a, I have a, in the meanwhile the name challenger also, um, and this is this is not not bad. Of course, you need to look into. There is of course financial risk. There is other risks as well on the other side. I mean, if we're not trying, what is what is the purpose? Why we're we here, right? Yeah. We need to try that. What is what is our as leaders? Um, and this is this is the thing, right? I mean, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of in, information material out about what is a what is a leader and what is a manager, right? And uh, and that's exactly you know where I'm trying to to tell my leadership what is the difference, right? In some ways, there is managers and there is leaders, but as a leader, you need to go in front and you need to do things differently. And the funny thing is, the more you do it more people will take it and will try it as well. Um, and of course, yeah, can can be that sometimes you, you have a bit uh, a financial risk there or whatever. And of course we need to learn out of that, but I'm rather I'm rather spending some 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 dollars into something where I say, okay, I stop it. Um, and I'm I'm happy to be honest with you. I found my people coming to me and say we stopped something. We we just had something, a recent example, we stopped the project after half a million spent. And the good thing was that my people were coming to me and said, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and I rather have that coming than juggling on with the whole thing and you spend a 5 million or 6 million and at the end of the day, you, you did not create any value. So I think it's it's about us. It's about what we're living, what we uh, what is our purpose, what is our topics. And, and we need to we need to live that fully and we need to embrace that fully in order to get everybody on that. And of course, I mean, um, and, and Bupesh was referring to that. I do believe, I mean, in 2015 or 2016, when I was still in Asia, there was a big discussion. What will be the future future uh, CIO? What, what is it? Is it more technology focused? Is it business focused? You know, at that point of time, it was it's coming more into the business, right? Now we have the discussion will be the, the CIOs will be the, the future CEOs and whatever. I do believe, yes. And that's the reason why we need to step up our game, yeah? Not sitting somewhere like in the past, you know, 10 years back or 15 years back, somewhere down there, somewhere in no place where nobody wants to go or whatever, right? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, are, we, are, we are the change agents in the company. We do know, we have a holistic picture about everything and we don't know, we do know exactly what is going on. We know the technology, we don't need to do everything by ourselves. We need to embrace the business thinking and then we need to live that. And if you think about go out of IT and think about this test and learn in other areas, when you look at engineering, they are doing this test and learn since years. They're spending money in something which might work, which might not work. Is anybody arguing about that? No, because it's part of their, it's part of their DNA somehow, right? And this is exactly the same for IT now, and we just need to live it. Okay. Well, Pesh, anything to add to that? I think you said it, and um, it's just perfect. You know, make sure you 
see renovation, be a champion of innovation, and stop it when, make sure you have checkpoints to measure when, you know, when progress is being made so you can spend a little, learn a lot, and stop when you need to. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally agree that you've got to keep an angle on it. And if the payback is not there or it's changing, um, you know, you got to back off. And I mean, tough, tough decisions to make, but, uh, you know, true leaders can make those and mm-hmm. it's going to be OK. And that has to be the mindset and the culture that is acceptable to get to a point and half a million dollars or 300,000 or something. But you're trying new things and you're pushing on the envelope. OK, with that, it's the top of the hour and we'll wrap up. And I want to just say thank you, Bupesh. Thank you, Lutz. Uh, and thank you to everybody that sat in on today's session. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Take Cheers. care. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for enjoying and joining us today for the insightful conversation. Uh, like many of our past uh, sessions, we will have this on our website for you shortly to share with your teams and networks. Um, but we hope to see you soon at another Avasant virtual event. Have All a great right. day, everyone. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.